everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline from Knitting House Square and today I have another knitting tutorial for you. So as promised a few weeks ago when I came out with my cable knit hat pattern, there is a matching mitten and that's the video you clicked on today. So in this video I'm going to be taking you through each one of the steps I used to create this mitten. So a lot of the steps are going to be repeats from the hat pattern. So as always, down in the description box below, you're going to find each one of the video breakpoints. That way, if you want to fast forward or rewind any specific part of the video, you can find all those times down below. But in this video, what I'm going to be taking you through is first, you can choose any cast on you'd like. Then we're going to join in the round. I knit these using magic loop. So we're going to join in the round, work some ribbing. Then we introduce in the cables and the increases for the thumb. So we can see the cable pattern is only actually on one side of the mitten. The back is just all purl stitches. So we're going to work up through the cables, place our thumb stitches on waist yarn, continue working up, do our decreases, and then we actually do a reverse Kitchener stitch is what I'm calling it. <laughs> so instead of having it appear as knit stitches, it actually appears as purl stitches. That way it blends in. I think it's pretty fun. Then we go back over here to the thumb. We work up through the thumb and cast off or bind off those few remaining stitches. This pattern is different for the left and right mitten because we need to make sure the cable pattern stays on the outside for either one. So in this video, I'm just going to be showing you one of the mittens and then of course just notify or read the pattern for the other mitten and the slight modifications that you need to make between the two. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my future videos. As I mentioned, down in the description box, you're going to find each one of those video breakpoints. You're also going to find the full written version of this pattern. So if you go down there, it's going to link you to my website. Then if you scroll down on that page, there's a PDF pattern button. Just click on that one and that'll take you directly to the PDF pattern. Also linked on my website and the notes down below, you're going to find all the different materials I use to create this project. So let's get started. First, starting off with the yarn I'm going to be using for this video. So just like in my hat tutorial, for this video, I'm going to be using the exact same yarn. So this is Brooklyn Tweed Tones. And basically how they do it is for each colorway, there's an overtone and an undertone. So these are actually two different colors. This one is the stonewash overtone. And then the mittens that I'm knitting, this is the stonewash colorway in the undertone. So just a cool little feature that they have. And I like how they're kind of coordinating, but not perfectly matching. So this is a worsted weight yarn, or number four. Each skein of this yarn has 140 yards. And if you're looking for something similar to this yarn, so like a medium weight or a number four that's comparable, you wanna look for something that recommends between a US size seven and nine and has about four and a quarter to five stitches per inch. So that's what you wanna be comparing against when you're selecting your yarn. Now, a pair of mittens takes just about one skein of this yarn. But of course, I'm always nervous about that, so I got two, just to be careful. Next up, you're gonna need a pair of scissors, a cable needle, one stitch marker, a tapestry needle, a ruler, and then lastly, I have my two knitting needle sizes for this project. So the smaller knitting needle size that I'm gonna be using for my ribbing is a US 6, and I knit everything using magic loop, so you can see I have a very long cord here. Then the larger knitting needle size that I'm going to be using for the upper portion of the mitten is a US 8. Again, I have a longer cord because I use Magic Loop. So now if you aren't planning on making these mittens lined, or if you tend to be have looser stitch definition when you do knit, I would recommend you go down a knitting needle size in each one of these. So instead of a 6, use a US 5, and instead of an 8, use a US 7. That'll give you a tighter gauge and a little bit warmer of a mitten, right? There'll be less gaps in your knitting. So something to keep in mind. Also, if you are planning on printing out the pattern, I'd recommend printing it out and then grabbing a highlighter. That way you can highlight across each one of these rows as we work up through the pattern. First up, starting with the cast on, you can really use any different cast on method that you'd like for these mittens. I'm actually going to be using the backward loop cast on just because recently I've been really been enjoying that one. Some other great ones to use, things like the long tail cast on or the German twisted cast on. Really, it's up to you, just as long as you're creating that stretchy edge along the bottom. As you can see, the ribbing of the mitten is knit to purl to ribbing. But something you want to keep in mind is whether or not to start with a knit to or a purl to. So if you're knitting the right mitten, 
you actually want to start with a purl two and end the round with a knit two. If you're knitting the left mitten, which is the one I'm about to show you, we're going to start with a knit two, then work across, finish with a purl two. So pay attention to that little detail just because of where we center the cable pattern within the mitten. So now I'm going to cast on a total of 40 stitches. And again, I'm going to beginning, be beginning with that knit two because I'm knitting the left mitten. So there are my 40 stitches. And so now if you're already familiar with Magic Loop or you're just using double pointed needles, just join in the round and continue working that ribbing portion for two inches. If you haven't learned Magic Loop before though and you're curious about it, I'll show real quick how I set up for Magic Loop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab on all those stitches that I cast on and I'm gonna slide them over to my center cord. Now I'm gonna count in to my halfway point. So I'm gonna count in 20 stitches. Once I find that 20 stitch location, I'm gonna spread out my stitches and grab onto the cord. Now I'm kinda of gonna fold the cord in half and now I'm gonna grab those stitches, pull on the cord and slide those stitches up to each one of the knitting needle points. So now the first thing I wanna do when I'm positioning my knitting needles is I kinda of wanna hold them on a flat plane that's like parallel to the table. So one's further away from me that I call my back knitting needle, one's closer to me that I call my front knitting needle. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make it so that my back knitting needle or the one furthest away from me is the one that has the working yarn coming out of it. So right now my front knitting needle has the working yarn coming out of it. So I'm just gonna rotate these. Now my back knitting needle has my working yarn coming out of it. So that's exactly what I want. Tail is coming out the front. Now, I'm just gonna go along and make sure this isn't twisted. So I can see this first part already got twisted, so I'm just gonna untwist that. And I'm gonna go all the way around, untwisting anything that may have become twisted as I was sliding them up my knitting needles. Okay, so that looks perfect. So when I hold my knitting needles for Magic Loop, again, one's gonna be further away, back knitting needle, that's the one with the working yarn front knitting needle closest to me. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be working across this front knitting needle. And the way you wanna position your yarn depends on whether that first stitch is a knit stitch or a purl stitch. So this one is my left mitten, so that first stitch is gonna be a knit stitch. So that means I wanna take my working yarn, I wanna bring it up in between my two knitting needles and then just drape it over that back knitting needle. Positioning my yarn like that is gonna prevent me from ending up with an accidental yarn over at the beginning of my round or in between the two knitting needles. Now, if the first stitch was a purl stitch, so maybe I was starting with my right mitten, in that case, I would just leave my working yarn down hanging below that back knitting needle. But again, my first stitch is knit stitch, so I'm gonna take my working yarn up in between the two knitting needles, drape it over that back knitting needle. Now to actually start working across the front, because in order to work one round in Magic Loop, we have to work all the way across the front knitting needle, turn our work, and then work all the way across the back knitting needle, then that's one full round. So to begin, I'm gonna grab onto that back knitting needle, hold onto the stitches, and I'm gonna pull just the knitting needle over to the right. So now essentially what I have is I have this knitting needle that I can now work with. Those back stitches are on the cord, and I still have plenty of loop over here on the left-hand side. I'm gonna take my free knitting needle now, and I'm gonna go right into that first stitch on my front knitting needle, and I'm gonna knit it. Again, this is knit two, purl two ribbing, so I'm gonna knit the second stitch, yarn front, purl two. And I'm gonna keep on going in pattern all the way across this front knitting needle. Now I'm finishing up with that final purl two on this front knitting needle. And when I finish that last stitch, I'm just gonna drop that second knitting needle that now doesn't have any stitches on it. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my work or my knitting needle with the stitches on it over towards the right. And I'm gonna thread back in my second knitting needle. So sometimes it gets a little tight on the first round. Okay, so now I need to rearrange my knitting needles and make sure everything's set up correctly again. So first thing I wanna check is, is my working yarn coming out my back knitting needle or the one furthest away from me? So in my case, it is. I wanna make sure all my work is going down towards the table. So that looks good. And both my knitting needle points are over towards the right. So I just finished with a purl two. So now the next stitch I'm gonna work is knit two. So I'm gonna bring my working yarn up in between the two knitting needles, just drape it over that back knitting needle, take my back knitting needle, pull it towards the right, so those back stitches end up on the cord, still plenty of loop over there on the left. So now I'm just gonna continue across with that knit two, purl two ribbing. Now I'm working that final stitch. And now again, I'm gonna drop my knitting needle that doesn't have any stitches on it. Turn my knitting needle point over towards the right. Slide back in my second knitting needle point. And now make sure my working yarn is coming out my back knitting needle. So in this case it is. All my work is going down towards the table. Knitting needle points are over towards the right. So now that I've worked across both halves of the stitches, I've worked one full round. So every time I get back over here where the tail is on the right side, that tells me I'm back at the beginning of my round. So now what I'm gonna continue do, doing is I'm using that magic loop technique, I'm gonna continue working at that knit two, purl two ribbing until my total cuff measures two inches. So I'm gonna measure from the cast on edge or down here up to the base of my knitting needle. Once that reaches two inches, I'll come back and I'll show you the next step where we increase our knitting needle size. Now I've just finished that bottom ribbing. So my next step is gonna to be to get, begin working the cable chart. So a few things to note on the cable chart before we begin working it. So this chart is gonna be worked in the round. So what I mean by that is that whenever we read each one of these rounds, we're gonna be reading from right to left. And essentially, the way you're gonna be reading it matches up exactly with how you go across your stitches in a row or in a round. Right, so this first block right here would be the next stitch that you're gonna work on your knitting needle or the first stitch in this round. So we're reading each one of these rows from right over to left. And then we're also reading from the bottom up towards the top. So that's what these two arrows are indicating on both sections of the chart. Right, so we read our knitting and when we actually work the stitches, we go right to left and then we work up through our work. So that's where we get those two arrows from. Then you'll also notice there's two different colors, right? So there's the white and then the gray. So anytime you see a white box, that's a knit stitch Anytime you see a gray box, that's a purl stitch. Right, so this first row right here where we're increasing the knitting needle size, we're just continuing our ribbing where we work knit two, purl two, all the way across the round. So let's work that one first, and then we'll work up here to row one. So now to increase my knitting needle size, the way I do this is I'm just gonna pick up my work right now, and I'm gonna pull that back knitting needle, or the one I would usually start knitting with, over to the right, and then just basically let that knitting needle hang off my work so I don't actually need to hold this one at all. Now I'm gonna pick up either one of my knitting needle points, that's my larger size, and I'm gonna go right into that first stitch on my front knitting needle and knit it, right? Just using my larger knitting needle size. And I'm gonna continue working all the way across the first half of my stitches, Now, once I finish going all the way across, I'm gonna turn my work so it's pointed towards the right. 
and I'm gonna thread back in my second knitting needle point. So here, we're actually threading back in the other side of that smaller knitting needle. So when I look at my work, I still have a larger knitting needle, smaller knitting needle. And now I'm gonna take that back knitting needle, which is the larger one, pull it towards the right, and begin working across the front of my stitches. First, let me just make sure that I don't end up with a yarn over here. Okay, so now as I finish going across that second half of my stitches and I drop my knitting needle point, all of my stitches are now on my larger knitting needle size and nothing is attached to the smaller knitting needle size. So I'm just gonna take this one, move it to the side, and now take my work, turn it towards the right, thread back in my second knitting needle point. So now my work is fully on that larger knitting needle size. So that was this first round here where we're just increasing the knitting needle size. And now in round one, we can see that there's these actual different stitches that's going on in here. So they don't just look like the regular boxes. These ones are our cable stitches. So when we're looking at a cable stitch, there's a few things to look for. The first thing to look for is how many boxes does it take up? So for instance, this first cable stitch that we have right here takes up one, two, three boxes. So this is a three stitch cable. And then if we look at the way the boxes are actually divided up, there's essentially two boxes that are going diagonally in the front and then one box that's going behind. So the way I tell whether or not I wanna hold my cable stitches in the front or the back of my work is I'm gonna look at this bottom right hand corner. So when I look at the bottom right hand corner of this, I can see that the bottom right hand corner is connected to this two stitch box that's going in front of this diagonal line in the background. So that tells me I'm gonna put two stitches on my cable needle, hold them in the front of my work, then I'm gonna work the one stitch that's going behind, and in this case the behind stitch is dark gray, right, so I'm gonna purl one stitch from my left hand knitting needle, then knit those two stitches being held on my cable needle. Now let's say instead, this one again is just the same thing over again, we looked at this one. So this one here again, it takes up three boxes, so this one's a three stitch cable. And if I look at the bottom right hand corner of this one, the bottom right hand corner is attached to only one box. Right, this is essentially the one stitch going behind these other two stitches. So because the bottom right hand corner is associated with just the one stitch, I'm gonna slide one stitch onto my cable needle. This stitch would be held in the back of my work. Then I would knit two stitches from my left hand knitting needle, then purl that one stitch being held in the back. So whenever I look at these, what I'm looking for is first how many stitches, then I look at that bottom right hand corner. The bottom right hand corner is gonna tell me how many stitches to put on a cable needle and whether to hold those stitches in the front or the back of my work. So again, let's just go through this one one more time. So if I look at the bottom right hand corner, the bottom right hand corner, this diagonal line that comes out of it is going in front of this other bar in the back. Right, so that tells me I'm holding these stitches in the front of my work on a cable needle, and there's two stitches here going in front. So I'm gonna slide two stitches onto my cable needle, hold them in the front of my work. Then I'm gonna purl the next stitch being held on my left-hand knitting needle, then come back to that cable needle and knit those two stitches. Now if instead, let's say we looked at this one right here. So this one is a four-stitch cable, and in the bottom right hand corner, we have the diagonal line going behind. And this diagonal line, it takes up two boxes. So there's two stitches being held on the cable needle. Those two stitches are going behind. So we're gonna slip two stitches onto a cable needle, hold it in the back of our work. Then over here we have two stitches. So we would knit the next two stitches being held on our left hand knitting needle. Then we would come back and knit the two stitches being held on the cable needle. 
So that's how I go all the way up through my work. And I try and just read the cable stitches rather than looking each one up because I find that's how I knit faster. Now, again, if you prefer, all of these different stitches are written out. So if you prefer reading the cable chart, of course, just use the key that's provided in the pattern and it explains each one of these cable patterns in words. But let's first say that we're gonna be working through this first row. So for this first row, again, I'm reading right over to left. So I have one, two, three, four gray boxes. So I'm gonna purl the first four stitches. Now that I've purled the first four, I get to my first cable stitch. So bottom right hand corner attached to a two stitch box and those two stitches are going in front. So I'm gonna slide the next two stitches from my left hand knitting needle onto a cable needle, hold them in front. The one stitch going behind is purled. So I'm gonna purl the next stitch on my left hand knitting needle then the two stitches on the cable needle are knit stitches. So I'm gonna knit the two stitches being held on my cable needle. Now I just have one box, so I'm just gonna purl one stitch. And then I have that exact same cable again. So I'm gonna slip two stitches onto my cable needle, hold it in the front, purl the next stitch, knit the two stitches, being held on my cable needle. Now we have a cable going the opposite direction. So bottom right hand corner attached to one stitch and that one stitch is going behind. So I'm gonna slip that single purl stitch onto my tapestry needle, hold it behind my work. Knit the next two stitches. then purl the one stitch being held on the cable needle. Purl one. And then work that cable again. So slip one onto a tapestry or onto the cable needle, hold it in the back, knit the next two. Purl the one on the cable needle. And now I'm gonna purl those final two stitches. Now when I turn my work and I work across the back half, all that I'm doing is I'm purling all the way across the back half. So there is no cabling that we're ever gonna be doing on the inside or the palm of the mitten, right? So the inside of the mitten is all just purl stitches. Only on the outside of the mitten is where we have these cable patterns. So I'm just gonna purl all the way across the second half of this round. Okay, so that was my first cable round. So what I did is I worked across row one, those first 20 stitches. Then I turned my work and I purled all the way across the back half of the stitches. Now you'll notice in these cable charts, they are typically only cabling every other round. So in round two, I'm just gonna work one, two, three, four, five purl stitches, knit two, two purl stitches, knit four, two purl stitches, knit two, purl three. And that's all the way across. Then I'll turn my work and purl all the way across the backside of the mitten. And now I'm gonna continue working all the way up through round four. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how to work these thumb increases into your work. Especially at the beginning of the round, it can be a little bit tricky. Now I'm about to begin round five. So I wanted to show you these two purl increases to work the thumb. So as you can see in row five, we're basically adding on two additional stitches. That's why we have two more stitches at the beginning of this round. So the way it works is first, the first thing I'm gonna be doing on this round is a make one purl wise. So to work a make one purl wise, the first thing I'm gonna do is just make sure my working yarn is hanging out down below because I'm gonna be starting with a purl stitch. Then I'm gonna take my back knitting needle and I'm gonna slide it over towards the right so those back stitches end up on the cord. 
Now, the way I hold my work, because basically what I need to do is I need to pick up the bar in between the stitch I just worked and the one I'm about to work, which is right there at the beginning of the round. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm basically going to hold like the corner of my work towards myself and stretch it out and slide these remaining stitches over here on the left up towards the knitting needle point. That way it makes it a little bit easier to move around. So now I'm going to be looking for the bar, the topmost bar in between the stitch I just worked and the one I'm about to work. So for me, that's right there. And how I'm going to pick it up is I'm going to take my left knitting needle point, go behind that bar, underneath it, then up the front. So now that's my new bar that's wrapped around that knitting needle. Now I don't have to hold the work like that anymore. I can just hold it as I normally would for Magic Loop. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the front portion of that bar as if to purl, wrap my yarn around, push through. So I just created a purl stitch from that bar. Now next up I'm going to purl two for those center two stitches. And now the next box again says to make one purl wise. So to do that stitch, again, I'm going to stretch out my work. Here it's a little bit easier. And I'm going to take my left knitting needle point into that topmost bar right there, going from back to front, purl into the front of that loop. So now I have four stitches on my knitting needle that correspond to those first four boxes. So we've made one purl wise, that's our first box. Then we purled two, then we made one purl wise again. And now if you wanted to, you would place a stitch marker right here to differentiate out your thumb stitches. And on your pattern, if you want to mark where that stitch marker would be, right, I'm going to mark it right basically two stitches in. Let me grab a different color here. So I would mark it right there is where my stitch marker is going to be going up through this first repeat of the pattern until I finish off where the thumb is. So now I'm going to continue working across the front portion of my chart all the way across to my remaining 18 stitches. Then I'm going to turn my work and just purl all the way across the back. Now next up on the pattern on round six, seven, and eight, we don't have any more increases. So all we're gonna do is just work those first four thumb stitches, pass our stitch marker, work the cable chart as noted, then purl across the back. The next thumb increases don't occur again until round nine. So I'll come back and I'll show you that thumb increase round one more time once I reach row nine. Now to show you round nine real quick, the way this one works is again, we're gonna start off with a make one purl wise, then we're going to purl one, two, three, four. Then we're going to work that next make one purl wise right before our stitch marker. So for the make one purl wise, the beginning of the round, again, I'm going to take my back knitting needle, pull it towards the right, and now twist my work so I'm looking at that inner corner. I'm going to slide those stitches a little bit closer to that knitting needle point. I want to pick up that topmost bar right there, going from back to front, and now I'm going to purl right into the front of that loop. I'm going to purl those four stitches and that'll take me right up to my stitch marker. Before I pass my stitch marker, I'm going to make one purl wise again. Purl into the front of that. Pass my stitch marker. And now I'm going to continue working. So that was my stitch marker, that blue line right there, across the rest of this round. And now I'm going to continue working all the way up through round 16. And when I finish round 16, I'm going to have a total of 12 stitches before that stitch marker. Then I'll come back and I'll show you round 17, where we start off by placing those thumb stitches on the waist yarn and casting on two additional stitches. So I'm now at the beginning of round 17, and for this one it says place the first 12 stitches on waist yarn, then cast on two stitches. So right here I have my tapestry needle, and I just threaded it with a small piece of waist yarn. So I'm just going to slip 
those first 12 stitches all the way up until the stitch marker off my knitting needle and onto the waist yarn. Also going to take off my stitch marker. Okay, so now next up, I need to cast on those two stitches at the beginning of the round. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take my back knitting needle, I'm going to pull it towards the right. Then I need to pick up my piece of working yarn, and I'm basically going to put my left hand behind that piece of working yarn. I'm going to grab onto it with my bottom three fingers, and now I'm going to loop my pointer finger. So I'm going to go up towards the work, then back behind down to the bottom, and now I have one loop around my pointer finger. Now I'm just going to take that free knitting needle I have, slide the loop off my finger and onto the knitting needle. Now again, I'm just going to take my hand in that same position, so I'm just grabbing on to the piece of working yarn with my bottom three fingers, taking my pointer finger back behind down to the bottom, up the front towards my work, back behind down to the bottom again. Slide that topmost loop off my finger onto the knitting needle. Now I've just cast on those two stitches, and the one thing I always like to check is that this piece of yarn isn't too large in between where I just cast on those two and the other side of my work. So mine's fairly long, so I'm just going to gently pull on this to tighten that up a bit. I might have to recast on one of those. But I'm just going to tighten that up to move it basically so that that bar is a little bit shorter. Okay. So that's perfect. If the bar's too long, you're going to end up with like a long piece of yarn in between the front and the back of your work. So now the two I just cast on are my new first two stitches in this 20 stitch repeat. So those two are the ones I just cast on. In this round, we can't actually work them, right? Because we just cast them on. So now next up, I'm going to work my cable stitch. And I'm just going to continue working this row all the way across the front, then purl all the way across the back. So now next up I'm going to be working round 18, and so those first two stitches are just going to be the two stitches that I just cast on, so I'm going to purl those two. Then I'm going to continue working all the way up through round 20. Once I've completed all the way up through round 20, I'm going to start back down here at round one and work all the way up again a second time. When I work up again the second time, I'm not going to be doing any of these thumb increases. So ignore all the make one purl wise. So essentially, I don't even need this whole portion of the pattern over here. I only need what's within the bold lines on either side. So don't work any of those increases. Just work strictly the cables all the way up through round 20 again. Then once you complete that, I'll come back and I'll show you those decreases. So now I've continued working through the cable chart a full second time. So you can see I re-highlighted just the center portion in blue that second time. So now I'm ready to begin these decrease rows up here at the top. So first, actually D1 through D4 is just regular cable rounds. There's no decreases involved in these four rounds. So first I'm going to do those, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you D5. So now next up, I'm at decrease round 5. And for this round, first up you can see that there's this new stitch pattern right here. So it takes up two boxes, it has a gray background, and then a diagonal line through it. So what this symbol is telling us to do is that's a purl two together. So we're going to be taking these two stitches and turning them into just one stitch. That's why the row above it, you can see we went down one stitch. So we have a purl two together, then just a regular cable pattern in the middle, and then lastly, we're going to finish the front side of our work with another purl two together. Now after this round, you can see that there's going to be a star symbol. That star symbol just means we want to decrease on the opposite side of our work as well. So on the opposite side of our work, we're going to work a purl two together, then purl until two stitches remain, then lastly, work a purl two together. So in total, we're going to decrease two stitches on the front side of our work, and then two stitches on the back side of our work. So starting off here, 
All I have to do to work a purl two together is I'm just gonna take my right knitting needle point into the base of the next two stitches as if to purl, just going through both of them at the same time. Wrap my yarn around and push through. So I turn those two stitches into just one. Now I'm just gonna work the cable pattern as I regularly would up until that next purl two together. Now I'm at those final two stitches. So again, I'm gonna purl those two together. Now that I've worked the cable pattern across the front side of my work, I'm gonna turn my work. And now on this side, I'm gonna work the purl two together, purl until two stitches remain, then work the final two stitches as a purl two together. Now next up we have D5. D5 doesn't have any of those decreased stitches in it, so I'm just gonna work this one in pattern as described, then purl across the back side of my work. D6 then has those same purl two together stitches, so we're gonna work two purl twos together on the front of our work. Then we have the star again, so we're gonna purl two together, purl until two stitches remain, then work a purl two together on the back of our work. Four stitches total decreased in that round. Now I just ended up doing D7 as well because that one just incorporated in two more of the purl two togethers and then again the purl two togethers on the second side of our work. Now D8 and D9, these ones actually have knit stitch decreases. So you can see we have the two stitch box again with the diagonal lines going through it, but the diagonal lines are tilted different ways. So the different distinction between the two is essentially the decrease you wanna use, you wanna end up with the stitches tilting towards that direction, right? So this one would be a right-leaning decrease. This one would be a left-leaning decrease. So in order to work these, this first one here, where we have the right-leaning knit stitch decrease, that one's gonna be a knit two together. When we have the left one over here, that one's gonna be a slip-slip knit. So let me show those to you real quick. So first up, I just need to purl the first stitch. Then I'm gonna work a knit two together. So I'm gonna take my right knitting needle point into the base of the next two stitches on my left knitting needle, going from the left to the right. So basically as if you're knitting one stitch, just you're now going through the center of both of them at the same time. Wrap your yarn around, pull through. It's a knit two together. And now when I look at my stitches, they're leaning towards the right. So that's exactly what I want. Now I'm just gonna work in pattern across the center. And now I'm up to that slip slip knit. So here I'm gonna slip the next two stitches individually as if I'm knitting them. And what that does is it's gonna twist each one of those stitches. Now that they're twisted, I'm gonna slide them back over onto my left knitting needle point. And now I'm gonna take my right knitting needle point into the back of both of those stitches and knit them together. So now when I look at that stitch decrease, that stitch decrease is leaning over towards the left. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So now I'm gonna turn my work. And on the back side of my work, again here, I still have that star. So I'm gonna work purl two together, purl all the way over until two stitches remain, then work another purl two together. Then the next decrease round after this one, again, it just has the knit two together and the slip slip knit. So I'm gonna work up through the second half of this round and then all the way through D9. Then I'll come back and I'll show you this last set of decreases that we need to do. Now lastly, all the way up here at the top, we have a decrease symbol that takes up three boxes. So what this is, is it's a slip, knit two together, then pass the slip stitch over. So we're turning three stitches into just one stitch. So let me show you one here. So first I'm gonna purl the first stitch, just for that first box there. And then for the abbreviation, the first letter's S, so I'm slipping one stitch 
and I want to twist it as I'm slipping it. So I'm going to slip it as if I'm knitting it. Then I want to do the knit two together or that K2. I'm going to knit two together. Now I'm going to pass that stitch that I slipped up over and off the one I just knit two together. So we turned all three of those stitches into just one. Now I'm going to purl three and do the same thing again. So I'm going to slip one as if I'm knitting it. We're going to knit two together. Then pass the previous slip stitch up over and off that knit two together. Now for the final decrease on the opposite side of the work, we want to basically end up with the same stitches that we have on the front side of our work. So I currently have six stitches remaining on the front side of my work and I have 10 stitches on the back. So that tells me I need to do four of those purl two togethers across the back side of my work. That's why I have the two stars here. Instead of doing two sets of purl two togethers, I'm gonna do the four sets. Now, if you end up having any more or less than that, just adjust the number of purl two togethers that you need to have the two sets of stitches match and have the same count. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna work a purl two together, then another purl two together, then I'm just going to knit two, or sorry, purl two. <laughs> then again, work two sets of purl two togethers. So now I have six stitches on either knitting needle point. So here I'm going to cut my yarn and I need to do Kitchener stitch. So I need to have a bit of a long tail. So I'm going to leave, let's say about 16 to 18 inches here. And I'm gonna grab my tapestry needle. So now the way I'm gonna cast off these remaining 12 stitches is I'm gonna work basically the reverse of Kitchener stitch. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to basically be the purl bumps on the outside rather than the flat knitting stitches. Typically when you work Kitchener stitch, it'll be at the top of a toe or something like that where you want it to just appear as those seamless knit stitches. Here I actually want the bumps to show so it matches up. So I'm gonna do basically a Kitchener stitch, but in reverse. Of course, if you don't wanna do Kitchener stitch in reverse, you can always just do the original version of Kitchener stitch and it'll look really pretty similar. So to start out, my two setup rows are first, I'm gonna slip my tapestry needle through the first stitch on my front knitting needle as if to knit. And I'm going to leave that first stitch on my front knitting needle. Then I'm going to take my tapestry needle through the first stitch on my back knitting needle as if to purl. And leave that on my back knitting needle. So that was my two stitch setup, and now I'm going to work the four stitch repeat. So first I'm going to go through the first stitch on my front knitting needle purl wise. Slip that stitch off my front knitting needle. Then I'm gonna go through the new first stitch on my front knitting needle, knit wise. Leave that stitch on my front knitting needle. I'm gonna to go to the first stitch on my back knitting needle, knit wise. Slide that stitch off my back knitting needle. Then I'm gonna go through the new first stitch on my back knitting needle, purl wise. Leave that stitch on my back knitting needle. And now I'm gonna repeat that four sets again. So first up, go through the first stitch on my front knitting needle purl wise. Slide that one off my front knitting needle. Go through the new first stitch on the front knitting needle knit wise. Leave that one on the front knitting needle. Go through the first stitch on the back knitting needle knit wise. Slide that one off the back knitting needle. Then go into the new first stitch on the back knitting needle purl wise. Leave that one on the back knitting needle. So now I'm going to put the text up in word form. That way you can read along with me as you're working it. And then once I finish, I'm just going to thread that tail to the inside of my mitten.
So now when you look across the top of the mitten, we can see that we have those purl bumps all the way along that top edge instead of the typical Kitchener stitch, which, which creates just like the knit stitches all the way along. I just like how it kind of blends the two sides of the cable pattern together. Now lastly, all we have to do is the thumb. So the thumb has actually worked exactly the same on either mitten. The way I pick up my stitches is first I'm gonna turn my mitten so the thumb is coming out here over towards the left. Then starting at this inner corner, I'm gonna go along my waist yarn and pick up half of the thumb stitches. So just the first half, so for me that's six. Then I'm gonna take my knitting needle, pull it all the way over so that those six stitches end up on my opposite knitting needle point, just at the base of it, you don't have to pull it up too far. Then I'm gonna turn my mitten, and now I'm gonna take my knitting needle point and pick up the second half of the stitches. So now again, when I actually begin my, working my rounds, I make sure my thumb is going over towards the left and I can take out my waist yarn at this point as well. So the way that the setup round is gonna work for the thumb is first I'm just gonna join my yarn, then I'm gonna purl six, turn my work, purl the other six, then I'm gonna pick up two stitches from this inner corner. So I wanna pick up two stitches from where I cast on those two stitches when I was working up through the portion of the mitten. So first let me join my yarn. So I'm just gonna take a small portion, thread it to the inside of my work. Purl the first set of six. Now the first stitch I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna pick it up before I turn my work, after I finish that round. So here I think it's easiest to pick up essentially one of these lowermost bars, as well as kind of like this topmost bar connecting the cable to where the thumb is. So I actually pick up both of them, and then I'm gonna purl them together. So now on that side of my work I have seven. Turn my work. Red back in my second knitting needle point. Pull out my back knitting needle as if I'm about to start purling across. And here now I'm gonna pick up my second stitch. So I'm gonna pick up, let's say the stitch next to it. And then again, that topmost bar, put them on my left knitting needle point and now purl those two together as well. And the reason I'm purling them together is that I found when I pick up two bars and then purl them together to create one stitch for the thumb, it helps to close up any holes that do try to form. Now I'm just gonna continue working all the way up through the thumb as it's written in the pattern. So you'll see we're gonna knit the thumb, or sorry, purl the thumb <laughs> for a certain distance, then we're gonna work two decrease rounds, and then lastly, just take our tail, thread it through the remaining stitches, and cast off. Just to mention again, now that I added those two stitches, I now have seven stitches on either side or 14 stitches total. So now here's one of my mittens after I blocked it. And to mention again how I block it is I just soak the mitten in lukewarm water for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then I take it out, gently squeeze it to get most of the water out. And then I just roll it up in an extra towel that I have. Then I lay it flat to dry. So that's how I block it. So now it's nice and flat. And once you block it, these cable stitches will really start to stand out. 
So next up, this part's completely optional, but I'm gonna put a lining inside of mine. So this one is just some fabric that I had in my stash left over, and it's a nice flannel print, so I feel like that'll be nice and cozy inside. Doesn't quite match, but I'm gonna say it almost does. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it because it's going inside. And I do actually have a full video on how I fleece line mittens. And so I'll link that one up here in the corner. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my hand in the mitten, put it flat, trace something that's a little bit larger than the actual mitten itself, cut out two of them, seam them together, put it inside the mitten, sew it in. <laughs> a lot of steps, but it's really pretty quick and easy and I'll link to that video up there in the corner. Another quick tip too, just make sure you try it on before you sew it into the mitten. Like mine, I just figured out was a little bit too tight down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna cut another one out where it's a little bit wider down here. Now I just turned both of my pieces inside out. So I have my mitten is currently inside out. And then also the piece I just sewed Switch it the other way, so now it's technically like right side out, so there are no seams around the outside. Now I'm just gonna put the cloth right onto the mitten. Okay, and now the last step is I'm just gonna fold this bottom edge, which is like my raw edge, under just a bit. And now I'm just gonna seam, and make sure you do a nice and loose seam, so don't pull anything too tight this cloth portion to the very top of that cuff portion of my mitten, or even a little bit higher if you cut it a little bit shorter like mine. So now I just finished going all the way around there, and if you want to too, you can do a little stitch at the top of the thumb, and then also a few at the top of the actual glove portion just to keep those two together. Now I just turn it the other way. And now we have our fleece lined mitten. So that was the first one. Now I'm gonna repeat those exact same steps for my second mitten. I hope you've enjoyed knitting these mittens with me today. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my future videos. I'll see you next time.